Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programmes in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a programme about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colourful. Maximise the flavour. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimise the risk. So welcome to Graham Care's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. Welcome back. Tell you what, have you been listening recently, heard people talking about fusion? Fusion. That just means taking one cuisine and sort of mixing it up with another one and, uh, and making something completely radically different. We're going to try that today. You know the pot sticker if you ever went into a Chinese restaurant? And usually in appetizers, they, they say to you, would you like pot stickers first? They say, yes, well, oh, I love pot stickers. As a matter of fact, I really do like pot stickers. Um, well, these are going to be pot stickers mixed with an Asian, but of course well, they're Asian, and French style. Hmm? And we're going to do that because of Kay Reed. Now, Kay actually filled in one of these individual food preference lists that I've told you a lot about. And uh, I extracted some of the things from that list that I thought were really neat. And, um, and we're going to design this dish for her. Now, let's meet Kay just for a moment. Uh, this is Kay. Kay Reed is actually an executive in a bank. Um, she has a goal of losing 100 pounds. Um, she goes way, 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 way back to an English um, uh, and Scottish parenthood, which I do, by the way, as well. Hi, Kay. Nice to meet you. Um, have you got a kilt? Um, I have. Uh, fun. Anyway, so apart from that, um, all of this leads me to be able to discuss something with you right now, very personally. Nobody else is watching. Um, I'm sorry that you've been trying and trying and trying and making major changes, and yet the very major nature of the change seems to trip you up. And I know exactly what that's like. You know, I had a little thought inside my head once which said to me, uh, do a small thing and do it well. And so it's little increments of things. So I w uh, I'm going to write to you, and uh, we're going to work on this thing. We're going to get rid of that 100 pounds, or at least a few pounds of it. Little by little. All right? Now, let's have a look at some of the things that you really like to eat. Do you like USA Southwestern food? Um, you like French and Chinese? And that's what gave me a clue, French Chinese. I thought, ah, stir-frying was big on your list, and stir-fried recipes were as well. So that was very important to me. That you like red pepper flakes for a zip, I think you put it. Soy sauce and sesame oil, mm-hmm, yeah, we could do with that. Shellfish, now it was beginning to gel in my mind. Grapes, no, I didn't know how to put grapes in, so I just assumed that, well, that's nice, you like grapes. And I was thrilled, by the way, that you like jicama, because I think it's a great bit. For but then came the coup de gras, so to speak, um, ch ginger root and garlic, and I thought, yes, what we'll do, we'll make pot stickers in a special way. And, well, come through and I'll show you how it's done. Come on. Actually, what I really want to do is to show you a French technique, and we'll use it for the pot stickers. It may have been, don't tell anybody who's French, that it's originally a Chinese idea that the French actually appropriated in a nice kind of way. We all appropriate those sort of things. Look, this is the springboard technique. So the springboard is called étouffée, E-T-O-U-F-F-E-E. -E. And it really means to sauté something or to shallow fry something, and then in addition to that, to be able to steam it, all in the same pot. And this is how it works. Just put a little dash of oil in the bottom. That's just a quarter of a teaspoonful. This is not a recipe so much as the technique. I'm going to put in first some aromats. Now, aromatic things could be ginger and just a little bit of green onion. Now, those are very important sort of aromatic ingredients. Just shake that around a little bit in the pan. And, um, now, you would um, look at these. The, here are some of the things you could use. We've used the green onion already. A leek you could use for this. Onion you could use. Garlic as well, shallots, or ginger, you know, or in which we've done. Now, those are the things. Uh, this is just variables, you know, so to show you how flexible this kind of thing is. So that's in the top. Then, um, let's get uh, chicken breast here. 
and just to show you how it could work. And uh, just drop the chicken breast in the top and start frying that. That's always fried skin down and leave the skin on and take it off before you serve it. All right, now on top of that, I would put a liquid. Now that could be Worcestershire sauce or a beer or a chicken stock. Could be fish sauce, you know, for those adventurous souls. Uh, a little balsamic vinegar, it goes very nicely, or other vinegar, cider vinegar. Um, a red wine, a Cabernet Sauvignon, um, or a white, a Chardonnay. Um, here's a lemon or an orange. I mean, literally, the whole thing, you could add different um, liquids to it. So, in this particular case, I'm just going to just uh, flip that one over there and just pour in a little, just about half a cup of white wine. That's the alkalis for me, you know that. Now, on top of that, you could then start adding some of the additional seasonings. Now, here's something, a few little flakes, we'll pull that to the side, I don't want it to boil that vigorously. A few flakes um, just to put some zip in there of the red peppers. Maybe some shiitake mushroom, a little um, um, rosemary even, or uh, some cilantro like I've got there. So you put the cilantro on the top too. So you see you've got a seasoning, a liquid, and then that aromatic beginning. So it's fried to begin with, now you've got the juices on it, now you put the lid on the top, and it's etouffee because you've sauteed, now you've got all the seasonings there, and now you gently cook that for about eight minutes and it's done, which will look exactly like this one here. And that thing is so plump and full of juices, you just strain the rest of the stuff underneath here, mix it with a little arrowroot, pour that clean, fragrant juice over the top, and man, have you got a chicken breast. Now, that's how to do it with chicken breast. Let's have a look at the pot stickers. I'll show you what's on the menu. Today on Graham Care's Kitchen, jumbo pot sticker. Chinese dumplings filled with elegantly seasoned shrimp and served with a soy lime dip. Okay, Kate, let's go for it. I'm thrilled by the way that you like them. I mean, that's great stuff. It always helps, doesn't it? Okay, now. Um, everything's on and getting cracking, so first of all, it's the Baltsyang side, which is just a teaspoonful of oil now. One, two, three, four. That just measured out exactly a teaspoonful. Um, uh, the pan's on sort of medium-high, not too high, because you'd scorch some of the ingredients. And then, first of all, uh, let's just squash three cloves of garlic. And these are marvelous cloves of garlic. Look at that, really. And, and they, they feel nice. They're glossy and whole and wonderful. Old young, an explosion of fragrance. That's what that term means. And so that's what we're going to get now. You just drop into the pan the garlic. Because it isn't too hot, so it's not going to scorch it. And then um, here I've got a small bunch of green onions. Right? and um, just drop those into the top as well. Now, you can stir those around, and immediately that bowl, that, that fragrance is coming up off the top. And then this, which is, um, I'm sure you've seen this before, but uh, this is the piece of uh, ginger, of root ginger. And if you peel that and cut that into pieces about the same size as an American quarter, huh? or an English shilling, I suppose. <laughs> 10p, isn't it, really? Um, okay, so five of those go up and then just drop those into the top as well. We don't worry about this really because it's not going to, if it was going to be used in a sauce at all, it's going to be strained. So this is just to give the essential basic flavor to the dish. And um, I, I did say that with the green onions, didn't I? Okay, now in go the pot stickers. Now these are the pot stickers, and I'll show you exactly how to make these in a moment. Just clear some of the fragrance to one side because you, it doesn't matter if they stick in the bottom, but it's, it's rather easier if you've got a plain surface to go on. And there's very little oil here, but there's enough to be able to make sure that this has a little brown spot on the bottom underneath the pot sticker itself. Okay, just a little brown spot. And so we'll just put that down there. Now, um, Let's put in just, now this is according to you, whether you want to do this or not, all right? Here is one teaspoonful of pepper flakes. Now Kay liked it, in fact she mentioned it specifically. She said, boy does that add some zip to it. And it does, I mean, 
This is almost when you go to a Thai restaurant and, uh, and, and it has you know, a whole stretch of stars along it. For me, you know, it's like five or 15 stars. For Trina, um, it's kind of like, why bother? You know, I mean, she has got asbestos mouth. Um, so we put that on the top. Now, um, don't cover it yet. Uh, the whole purpose behind this is to develop that, that little brown crustiness on the bottom. It's a peculiar to pot stickers, but hey, that's the etouffee method which the French have been doing for years. All right, so that's going on the top there. Now let me show you how to make these, uh, the stickers themselves. Now, these are pretty easy, actually. Uh, and, in fact, they're incredibly easy. You don't have to have one of these. I just wanted to show it because I think this is fun. Uh, two cups of flour, which is a strong flour. That is, you know that it is a hard wheat flour. And it's unbleached hard wheat flour. You want the gluten in this one. Helps to hold it together. And you think, this reminds me, by the way, of the marina where I keep my boat. Um, uh, they, they make the pinnacles like this so that seagulls don't roost on them. And I know why they do that, by the way, so that they roost on my boat. I call my boat Guano Island sometimes because of that. Well, but they're nice, you know. <coughs> First thing in the morning, it just says, ah, nice to be on the outside. Ah, let's see how these are going now. Let me just uh, lift one of those up and have it. Oh, not quite. Just want that to get a little brown, so that's fine. All right. So, um, over here, so that's just plain flour, okay? Two cups of plain flour, put it in a processor. Now, a processor does this very well indeed. I mean, this is, if you ever want justification for buying a processor, <laughs> pot stickers is it. All right, um, start turning it on, and with two th uh, thirds of a cup of plain water, and just drop that in, and it'll gradually incorporate it. And when it's almost completely incorporated, switch it to the faster speed and literally stand back. It'll tell you when it's had enough. Now, um, <laughs> it's telling me this. It doesn't take long. It should shoot this up and down in the air a little bit by saying, you know, like Popeye movies. Um, uh, it isn't going to do it. It did it before. It was so funny. It was going like this. <laughs> You would, have, you would have shrieked with laughter. You laugh now, no fun. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so here is the pastry. We'll cut back to that in just a second. I just wanted to show you this first. This is a shiitake mushroom, and it's dried, and you can buy them in, in good stores, and they're all over the place now. They're really well, well known. And uh, you need seven of those, seven caps, and some just near boiling water, um, about 14 ounces of boiling water, Pour it on the top and just let that settle for half an hour, all right? Now, after half an hour, you'd strain it through uh, a little sieve like this and really press out the moisture. Press it through like so. And then that comes down to a lovely, fragrant mushroom essence, if you will. Not over-fragrant, but it is certainly you will know that you've got it. All right, now I actually had some more here, and now by this time, these pot stickers will be right. You will be right. Just nice along the bottom here. I can feel the crustiness of it there. Don't burn them. Just make sure that it's there, and they're stuck with all the fragrances underneath. Magnificent. Now, we'll simply take that essence of the mushroom, pour it in. <coughs> Ooh! <coughs> There's a little of that uh, chili came up there. And uh, just pull that back so it doesn't boil its guts out, but just let it on there, and it's going to gently now, let me see, just gently boil for just 10 minutes. All right? um, so I'm just going to put that on there. Good, and they'll be right. Fine. Let's get back to the, uh, to the pastry. All right? um, just whiz the board over the top and then show you how this pastry works. It's really quite an interesting thing, you know, because um, with this kind of food processor, uh, you can actually get some of the malleability of the dough, which otherwise you would have to spend two or three minutes at least doing it this way. So I, I, I like to do it anyway, because I would miss it. <laughs> it's one of the things I love. It's one of the things I miss about making bread, and one of those incredible things where you actually make bread with one of those new 
bread machines that, you know, does things in the middle of the night. That's what it's doing in the middle of the night, and you can't, you can't enjoy it. Um, okay, take a little piece of plastic and plastic film and just secure it completely, wrap it up, and then put it in the refrigerator for, oh, let's say a half an hour. What we need to do is we, it just needs to get nice and cool. So go and find something else to do. It's, you can't add that on to the time of doing something, can you? Really? Well, I suppose you could. Now, this is enough for eight large pot stickers. And so what you do is when you get this out here, you'll find it's a little tackier than it was when it went in. Um, and that's okay because it just, uh, it's absorbing the moisture is actually going into it. See how it's pulling away from the board there? All right. So just try not to let that happen. Get it down in some flour straight away and then roll that up until a nice neat little cylinder and then we can just cut this off. You just measure this in, in um, four pieces and then between the two and then that gives you the eight pieces that you actually need to be able to make each, um, each. I've made them jumbo size. You see, they're that size because I didn't want you to have to spend all day rolling things out so you can just roll them out. Normally you'd get about three to one of these big ones here. So just take the rolling pin out and just keep on um, moving from the center outwards. You can roll out very thin outsides and very, very, very sort of rounded inside on the bottom so that when it gets to the pot sticker stage, it doesn't tear on the bottom of the pan, okay? So, what you can do when it's very delicate like this is just roll it up on the pastry pin like so and then just unroll it over the top. All right, there we go. So, now you can do this by hand, of course, you don't have to have one of these machines, but it uh, kind of helps and uh, Kay said that she had a little bit of a problem with it, so I wanted to find a good way for you, Kay. So, um, two well-rounded tablespoons full of the filling, which I'll show you in a second. And then just anoint the sides with a little water. Now, if you don't um, put the water around the side, the thing will break open and it'll be a terrible mess. So make sure that it's good and wet, like so. And then just snap it up close. <laughs> it's rather like the dentist's office, you know, when you go in and, and they, they take an impression of your teeth. I don't really ever had that done, but they, they always ask you questions. And I was like, how does that feel? And you're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> They always want to have conversation with you. So, okay, see how that comes out? That just lifts out perfectly, just like so. Huh? Simple. All right, now that was the stage at which it went into the pan there, so I can pop that on one side. Now let's have a look and see where we've got to. Because here we uh, are almost ready for the final um, say. Here I've got a mix of shrimp. It's a pound of shrimp like this and the seven mushrooms which have been soaked. And they're chopped together. And with that, there's a half a cup of green onions which are put with that as well. And just one teaspoonful of grated ginger. Right. Then to finish it off, you just put a, a, a teaspoonful of sesame oil and a tablespoonful of soy sauce, okay? Just drop that into the top. That's the mix. That's what I put into the other one there, with the exception of just two tablespoons full of arrowroot, just to hold it together, which is really great. Okay, good. Now, there's a dunking sauce which goes over the top. Uh, well, not over the top, but that you dunk into it, you know. So there's two tablespoons full of soy sauce, and here, just a tablespoonful of chopped uh, green onion, and two tablespoons full, well try one because Kay thought it was, uh, the, the two was a little bit much, of um, lime juice and just a dash of the soy, uh, of, of the toasted sesame. Now that's it. That makes the dunking thing. Very simple. All right. Let's have a look and see what this looks like. <coughs> um, we have here, look, look at it. It's just fabulous. Look, they're just perfect now. They've had the 10 minutes, there's one. They puff up, look, just, and they, they have absolutely got the most wonderful, wonderful flavor because of all of that bout siang in the beginning. Little 
sort of wisps of the green onion there. And then on the side of the plate, you can place uh, just a little bit of that dunking liquid. Where are we? Here we are. Um, just put a little bit of that into the plate and then serve that up with a bowl on the side in case your pals want to actually take the thing up and dunk it. <laughs> you ready? Come on through. I'll show you how it looks. You know, there's all kinds of jokes told about um, finger bowls, but um, I did have a friend once who did drink it. <laughs> he was a terrific character. All right, now, these are what the little um, pot stickers look like, and they haven't really had the same kind of etouffee treatment that we put into the bottom of them. So they don't have quite the same um, aromatic quality. But let's have a look at the numbers of them. Um, Three, th those are pork pot stickers, and these, of course, are shellfish. So 346 in calories, so those go down quite a bit. Four grams of fat total instead of 24. That's wonderful. And just one saturated fat. The calories from fat are 216 calories from fat here and 36 calories from fat there. That means that on the DV, which is for American audiences, it's 6%. Cholesterol is 90. That's 106. And sodium, look at that sodium there. Woohoohoo! Down to 580. And carbohydrates, 58, that's 56. Because they're really, you know, um, that comes from the size of the pot sticker after all. And what I've done is I've simply incorporated several of those into one of these. All right. So just a little bit of a bite from the end there. I'm going to use the <laughs> knife and fork because I don't want to get in a mess here. Mmm, that lime, ooh, I got a jolt. Oh, boy, did I get it off from one of those little red peppers. Look, the whole point is, can you see how wonderful this would be for springboarding? Go on, do a small scene, do it well. <laughs> now, I don't know whether you would like to do this, but how about the second day? That's the day after you've made the pot stickers, all right? Um, and what you do is you simply take a little oil and just drop it into a saucepan, just, just a little touch, just to be able to get some of the ingredients going, and, um, and go out and forage for and find. Nowadays, it's so easy to find. It's really amazing. This is lemongrass. So you look for a piece of lemongrass in, in those good supermarkets which have got really good, progressive um, produce departments. And then chop that up and put that into the bottom on the oil. Put a couple of green onions and chop that up and put that in too. Huh? And then, if you can find them, you may need to go to an Asian market to be able to find these. These are kaffir lime leaves, and they are absolutely wonderful. You drop those in as well. I know this is all a little bit, you know, great, but oh, fantastic. This is a great soup and done so quickly. So you just do that into the bottom. And then this little mix here, this is a teaspoonful of the hottest stuff in the world. Well, not really, but it, it certainly gets up there. Called Thai roasted chili paste. Look for it, because it is a wonderful thing to be able to have in your home. All right, and in your food. Uh, here uh, is uh, one quart, that's 32 ounces, 4832, of chicken stock. Pour that on the top and then throw into that, just simmer that for about 30 minutes, and then simmer it and just pop into the top of that a few mushrooms, just as a nice garnish. And then, right on the top of that, a few leaves of cilantro. All right? And um, then stir it with... The <laughs> oh, I've never thought of doing that before. That would be kind of fun. Stir it up. Now, you're going to say, what about the pot stickers? I'm glad you asked. Um, the pot sticker is kept until the next day. Now, this is the pot sticker there. What I do is I simply cut those into small pieces. Now, you don't put it in at the beginning, but you do after it's had the 30 minutes cooking. You're ready to serve. You just drop those pot stickers in, and um, um, literally a pot sticker ahead, just one, will be fine. This serves four people, and it's a magnificent dish. A little fish sauce, if you can stand it, right at the very end, to be able to give that fragrance to the whole dish. <sighs> Wonderful. Just let the pot stickers come up to the heat. Doesn't take a moment. Don't overcook it. And then take this good soup bowl 
And it's, it's wise to invest in a nice looking soup bowl. And then you can look at the rain coming down and say, who cares? Mmm! Oh, God bless. Okay, Kay, I hope that little thing helps you with the pots. I'll tell you what, I've sent it to you, so um, enjoy using it. All right, thanks so much. Now, washing up.